Hello and welcome to this video. This is the Lecture 12 R Companion where we learn how to do nested designs in R. So let's look at example. Let's pull an example from the book. It's going to be example 10.4. Starts on page 544. The data is going to come from uh, page 10. Uh, I'm sorry. Data is going to come from table 1010. So let me go ahead and start a new script. Let's put in that data. So there's the data. I really typed that up quickly. And again, we sh really should uh, double check that we typed everything in correctly. And compare what I have actually in the data with what's in table 1010. Um, notice I'm doing that before, again, I'm doing that before I do the factors, because once you create a uh, change shift into a factor and change worker into a factor, um, once you do that, the values that show up here are just 1, 2, 3, and 1 through 12. So I just run those, and I'll just rerun that C bind, and notice 1 through 12. And that's because when you change a variable to a factor or storing it internally as an integer with a lookup table, and that lookup table um, allows R to, for instance, print out worker not as integers but as levels in this factor. So W1 actually translates to an integer of 1, but in the lookup table it comes out as W1. See, I changed them all to numbers. W1 corresponds to a 1, W2 corresponds to a 5, W3 corresponds to a 6, etc. Because W2 is a 5, here's the levels 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, there's W2. Little peek at the internal workings of R. But saving it as an um, integer really does speed up some calculations. So let's begin. We're going to model this. Both the uh, shift and the worker are random, uh, random effects. The worker is nested within shift, and that's the new thing here. The reason that worker is nested within shift is because each worker is in a shift. The worker does not belong to more than one shift. You can think of it that way. So mod 1, what function should we use? That AOV function is really powerful. And it's kind of interesting because the only thing that the AOV function does, okay, there's a lot of little things that it does, but the main thing that the AOV function does is matrix, uh, matrix multiplication. Dependent variable tilde shift. That's our int. Oops, that should be a plus. And then, ooh, worker is nested within the shift. So we can't just do worker because this would be a this would indicate that worker worker 1 can be in any shift. Um, since worker is nested within shift, the way to indicate that with the AOV function is shift. That's a colon worker. Run that and then summary of mod 1. And let's look at this table. This is the typical summary table for analysis of variance in R. Since it's typical, it does have one mistake. And we'll go ahead and call it a mistake, or we could call it a feature um, or a bug uh, when it comes to nested designs. Because really, AOV was not, the AOV function was not originally created for nested designs. It was created for much simpler designs. Um, but we can use it for nested as long as we are aware of the mistake and can fix that mistake. So let's compare this output with uh, table 10.11 on page 546. And we're going to skip the top of that table. Let's go to the middle of the table. Um, let's go to shift, shift, two degrees of freedom. So shift, two degrees of freedom. Sums of squares is 86.9333333. There we go. So that's good. Mean squared, oops, there's no mean squared there. Oh well. Let's go back to shift colon worker. Um, SAS treats this just as worker. 
R keeps it as shift colon worker for two reasons. Reason number one is because this actually is the variable that R is looking at, and two is it helps us to, uh, helps to remind us about the structure that's going on here. Uh, nine degrees of freedom, sums of squares of 247.65. Residuals again for R, residuals are the errors. 48 degrees of freedom, sums of squares is 149.6. The top of the column in table 1011 of the sums of squares is total. We get 59 degrees of freedom by adding these three numbers. We get 44.1833 by adding these three numbers. Remember, the, the concept behind this analysis of variance is that you're able to partition the total, various, total sums of squares and total degrees of freedom into various parts. Here we're, we're partitioning that into three parts. The part ascribed to shift, the part ascribed to worker within the shift, and the part ascribed to everything that's left over. Um, don't think of it as error. I mean, this is one thing I like about R is it's residual indicates it's what's left over. And that's really what this is. It's not an error. It's just what's left over. It's what we haven't described yet. OK, table 1011, let's look at the bottom of it. So we got shift, and then we got the mean squared for shift is 43.46. There we go. And for worker, it's 27.516. There we go. And the mean squared error is 3.12. There we go. So we got most of that table. And I do want to clarify right here, there is no single ANOVA table for this type of, uh, for this type of model. Back when we were doing one-way, two-way, three-way fixed effects models, there was a typical ANOVA table, one that you could post and everybody would know exactly what it is. Once we get beyond the simple uh, CRTs and factorial designs, that no longer exists. It's just a way of the author it's just trying to summarize all the data and get it to the reader. And the, the book in Table 1011 does a good job of getting a lot of information into a table, but that may not be a nice table for you. OK, now let's go back up to the middle of table 1011 and look at the F value column. Let's go over the error, 48 degrees of free sum of squares, F value. OK, there's no F value corresponding to the error. Worker, 9 degrees of freedom, 247.65. F value is 8.2888. That sounds good. And then we got the P value, that's right. Notice in the table 1011, it then says the error term is error. For R, all of the F values will have a denominator of the mean squared error, which for the worker in shift is the correct denominator. But for the shift, it's not. And for reasons that we covered in the lecture, the denominator for the F statistic for the shift isn't the mean squared error. It's not the 3.12. It's the mean squared due to the worker. Because that shift whole thing includes the shift variation and the worker variation. And so in order to get rid of that worker variation, you have to divide by that worker variation. So this F value of 13.947 is wrong. And therefore, the p value is wrong. This 13.947 is just the mean squared shift divided by the mean squared residual. What this F value should be is mean squared shift divided by mean squared worker. So the F value really should be F shift really should equal that 43.47 divided by 27.52, 1.579578, which is going to differ slightly from what's in the book because I'm just reading numbers off the table instead of actually pulling the numbers from the internals of the table. So the p-value is not going to be what's recorded here of a 1.68 times 10 to the negative fifth because that corresponds to this 13.947, which is wrong. We need the p-value corresponding to that 1.579578. How do we do it? Same as it ha oops, there we go. Same as usual. F shift. Degrees of freedom for the numerator is just the 2, because that's the numerator of that F statistic. And degrees of freedom for the denominator is going to be 9, because that's the denominator for that, for this F statistic. It's 
So the p-value, the correct p-value is 0.2582413. Or since we're doing a lot of rounding, let's just say 0.258. And that matches what the book has. Because you're able to tell SAS, SAS has different routines for this, but you're able to tell SAS, hey, the correct denominator is the degrees, uh, is, the, uh, is the mean squared for worker. So with the ANOVA command, the AOV command, you really do have to pay attention. And at one level, that's why I like the AOV command. It's because it forces you to keep connected to your model and your data so that you really do know what's going on. Um, with SAS, it's a lot more of just type in the words and, and numbers get popped out. And if you're familiar with SAS, the, the philosophy behind SAS is type a little and get a whole lot. Um, for R, it's type a little and get a little. So that's most of it. What we seem to be missing now are the variance components. Um, now, there's a couple ways of getting the variance components. Um, both ways require an additional uh, package. Um, so I'm going to show you, actually, going to show you both ways. Um, the first package I want you to look at is LME4. And before you load that, the second package we're going to look at is uh, var comp. So go ahead and pause this and go up here to packages and install both LME4 and the var comp. Now, before you do that, let me just say if you're running short on memory, um, you really should just install the LME4 package. Um, the VARCOMP package will give you the same information, but it's not as flexible as LME4. And, and I think flexible is the wrong word here. LME4 actually does a whole lot of stuff. And if we were to go back to day one, okay, we can't go back to the first day of the second half of the class when we started working with random effects, we could do everything with the LME4 package instead of using AOV. So let's go ahead and... Now, download the two. Now, hit pause and come back in just a moment. Hi, and welcome back. Um, I ran it, loaded it. Now, here's how to work it. I'll go ahead and call it mod 2. The function is LMER. And that's going to be kind of confusing. The package's name is LME4. The function is LMER. And it's going to behave a lot like the AOV function takes the formula, it's going to be dependent variable tilde, and then all of the fixed effects, which we don't have any. But if shift were a fixed effect, we just type it in as shift, followed by the random effects. Well, to indicate that shift is a random effect, we're going to do a 1 and then a vertical bar. That vertical bar is located above the Enter key. The fact that the shift follows the 1 and the vertical bar indicates to the LMER function that shift is a random effect. Up here on the AOV, we did not need to tell R that shift was a random effect. We just interpreted, interpreted the results in terms of it being a random effect. If shift were a fixed effect, that model, that line would be exactly the same, and we'd have to interpret shift as a fixed effect. So again, AOV allows us that flexibility, but again, it forces us to pay attention to what we're really doing, to know our model and to know the data generating process. OK, and then shift containing worker. Now, I will tell you one habit that I got into, and I'm not sure why I got into this habit, and it's completely irrelevant to, to making this work. I put these random effects inside of parentheses, and I'm really not sure how I got into that habit. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't help. I think it helps me interpret this better, realizing it's a, this is one chunk of something, and this is one chunk of something. 
So parentheses or not parentheses around each of these terms completely up to you. Let's run it. Yay, no mistakes. Then summary of mod 2. And here's the summary. Notice that the output for the LMER function is slightly different than the output for the AOV. And by slightly different, I mean it's pretty different. So let's look through here, and there's some pieces of information I want to point out. One, it tells us that this is a linear mixed model fit by Remmel. Remmel is restricted maximum likelihood. Here's the formula that got spit back out. The Remmel criterion at convergence, reading this tells us that it did converge, and that's good. If it does not converge, then there is something wrong with our model. Um, this value of 263.5 has absolutely no meaning for us. I'll just leave it at that. Scaled residuals, here's the RAM effects table. Now let's look at residual. The variance for the residual, now let's go to table 10.11. Bottom part, variance source is error. Look over at the mean squared. Yeah, go ahead and look at the mean squared. But more important, this is the variance component. Um, and again, remember that the variance component, the sigma squared, is always, the estimate for that is always going to be the mean squared error. Now let's move up one row in table 1011. For worker, here we've got that first. And the variance is 4.88. And that's the variance component for the worker. And then for the shift, it's 0.7975. And total, again, total is not listed, but we can get that just by adding the variance components for the worker, the shift, and the residual. And I do want to clarify that these standard deviations are just the square roots of the variances, as always. Standard deviation is the square root of the variance. Now there's one last thing that this gives us, the fixed effects table. We had no fix a variable that was a fixed effect, so the only fixed effect is the intercept. The estimate for that intercept is 5.2833, which matches the mean at the bottom of table 1011. And the standard error is 0.8511, which matches the standard error of the mean in table 10.11. The t value, as usual, is just the estimate divided by the standard error. This test statistic uh, follows a t distribution with degrees of freedom equal to the um, degrees of freedom for the uh, errors, which is 48. T value of 6.207, that's incredibly, that's a very large T value, which corresponds to a very small P value. Since the P value, which we could easily calculate, is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. And as usual, the null hypothesis for a position is that the position is equal to zero. The null means zero. So we can conclude that the intercept is not zero. Whoop de doo. <clears throat> Another way we could get just the RAM components, I'm sorry, just get the variance components, is to do a print on the model and specify the components that we want, being quote capital V, little a, little r. Now we run that, and we just get the variance components with a few more digits. How many more digits? Well, seven digits all together. And also we get the 5.28, etc. So this is a way of increasing the number of digits or increasing the precision, I guess. But beware of false precision. The data were measured to the unit's position. Coming up with seven digits for the variance really does not make sense. Um, you should come up with two beyond what the data is measured in. Um, 
maybe three if you're really certain that this is 9.0, but you should only report this is 3.12, and 0 0.80, and 4.88, and 5.28. Uh, reporting it to seven digits just makes you think you have more information than you really do. Got that loop. Four point eight eight point seven nine eight three point one one seven. Okay. That was interesting. Okay. The next way that we could do it is using the var comp um, function in the var comp library. And the function is var comp. And see if I can remember how to do this. I state that the fixed as an X, I hope, and give the, the the formula for the fixed effect, and that's just going to be the prod val squiggle one because we have no no uh, fixed effects in here other than the intercept, and then the random, and that's going to equal to the random effects, but it's only the right hand side, so you start with the tilde, that shift plus shift colon worker oh and I do have to warn you spaces at times usually spaces are not an issue I could put a space here a space here not a problem I could put a space here not a problem I could take that space away I could take these spaces away not a problem usually spaces don't matter here is one place where spaces do matter. When you put two symbols together that actually have another meaning. Um, so if I were to delete that space and run it, I'm supposed to get an error there. I don't know, I didn't get an error. I'm supposed to get an error. Um, but this is one of those cases where you really should have space around your symbols. Yeah, not going to worry about that. Okay, so there's the the mean. This doesn't give you the standard error of the mean like the LMER function did. It gives the variance components. There's the 7975, there's a 488, there's a 31167. So this gives us a lot of the same information that the LMER function does. But the LMER function gives us more information. So I'm just introducing this package, I never use it myself. So take it for what it is. So summary. And it's getting warm out, so it is quite summary. We did the showed how to do nested designs in R. Um, again, the first step is to load in the data. Showed you how to get a lot of that table of 10.11 using just the plain old AOV function. I then warned you that when you're nesting, R is not going to divide by the correct uh, mean squared. In the analysis of variance table, R always divides by the mean squared error. But in this case, to get the correct F value for the shift, you're going to have to divide by the, sh uh, the worker mean squared error. So we did that. And then we calculated again the P value corresponding to that F value. Noting that degrees of freedom for the numerator were the degrees of freedom for the shift, as always, and the degrees of freedom for the denominator were the degrees of freedom for the worker, not for the residuals. And then we tried to get the variance components, showed you two methods. And one was the var comp, use the var comp function in the var comp package. It's rather limiting. Um, I showed you the LME package which I strongly suggest that you download because there's a lot of good stuff in that and the function is LMER and I showed you where to get pull the information off that and what each of those values meant boom and I also mentioned what Remel stood for why convergence is a good thing the variance components etc so hopefully this was helpful take care of yourself goodbye